Yeah. So driving into campus on that Sunday morning, there wasn't any snow on the ground. Everything was fine, you know. And <laughs> as I kind of like, I was kind of pacing from my office to the door, just kind of because I, I knew it was coming. And I, I would kind of look. I'm like, oh, it's not too bad, and not too. And then I got to the point where I'm like, this is awful. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how we're gonna play today, you know. So uh, went and had a meeting um, with the NCAA representative, uh, RAD, uh, Craig. Um, you know, we're talking about options and whatever. And I have to give a, a ton of credit to our facility staff and our assistant, or our, excuse me, our women's head coach Mike Modich. Everyone was on the field with shovels trying to get the lines uh, shoveled and the plow was going, whatever. But Truthfully, walking into that first half, my personal perspective was this field is going to hurt both teams tremendously because, like you said, yeah. you know they want to be on the ball and play. And it was a really weird, you know, guys are trying to figure out their footing, they're slipping, the ball stopping. Yeah, uh, it was a really just ugly, ugly first half. And uh, they scored on a PK. And again, we can sit here and debate all day. You know, does that happen if the snow the guy slips? It, it, it's you know it's yeah. just part of the game. You got to deal with it and, and move on. But um, towards the end of that first half, I felt like we were really starting to get some momentum and and stringing some passes together and, and figuring it out. And, and again, to your point, I think our guys who you know most are from Northeast Ohio or have dealt with these inclement weather conditions, they just mm -hmm. figured it out a little bit quicker because they grew up here. Um, but then the really odd thing happened where. You come to the halftime, talk with the referees, and again, NCAA representative, Craig, myself, and the two options were, hey, we go have halftime and come back out here in 15 minutes and we just deal with it, or do we take a 45-minute break and get this field plowed because there is a break in the radar? And yeah. selfishly, um, like I said, I felt like we were we were starting to take uh, control of the game a little bit, and you don't want to kill your momentum. Um, yeah. But I knew it wasn't right ethically uh, for them it, it, it I wouldn't have slept well if I if I just said Let, let's go back out there and not not did the right thing it was the right thing yeah. to get the field clear because there was going to be a break in the snow and that's what we did it was very odd to have that long of a halftime and you know you <laughs> met that and just waited and waited and waited uh, but you know luckily for us our guys uh, they stayed ready and loose and they got back out there and took care of business but I, I think one of the but one of the funnier stories, just in hindsight, was, you know, we scored the goal to tie it 1-1. And then our one of our freshman forwards, his name's Jack Folk, who, again, was one of those three of the four leading scorers that I referenced earlier in, in the discussion. He was dead. I mean, he, he played a lot the day before. He, he needed a break. And I had a sub at midfield for him maybe for, for five five or six minutes waiting for him to go in. And he is literally just dragging. And I was just trying to get him five, 10 minutes and I was gonna put him back in because he was playing great. Well, sure enough, ball comes down, he breaks through, he scores the goal and <laughs> puts us up 2-1. He could, he was too tired to even celebrate. I mean, he literally like <laughs> off the field, we threw the other, our, our sub in there, um, got him his five, 10 minutes and he went to finish the game. But um, I'm glad the ball didn't go out of bounds <laughs> yeah. because who knows what would have happened. But yeah, he, I was trying to sub him out because he was asking for one, which is definitely not his style. He, he, he'll he play through a lot. Yeah. He was that tired, and we just got lucky that the ball didn't go out. So that's I, I forgot that. Like, I didn't even think about that. That that's the, that's the second game in two days, right? Like, that, you know, and you, you played a relatively normal game, and then you go into, and that's, that's what you're dealing with, which definitely – tires like anybody who's played in the snow knows that there's something about it everything's heavier your boots are heavier the ball's heavier trying to make a pass is a struggle um keeping your feet is a struggle um i got a kick out of it i i mean i scoreboard no scoreboard i was i was laughing i was loving it i was like guys would run and the ball would sort of stop and they'd keep going because they couldn't stop otherwise they'd wipe out i'm like oh yeah <laughs> this is back home right like it was it was kind of normal it, it was incredible and i give johns hopkins a lot of credit that I, I don't know his name forgive me but their left center back was a fantastic player and he yeah. was really good at 
making whoever that target forward work was. And yeah. that happened to be Jack, you know, and that's why yeah. he probably needed us up because he was chasing that guy all over the place. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, to your point, like running in snow, you might as well be running in sand. It, it, it's sand. It's, yeah. It's no fun. That's for sure. No, no, no. Um, 